It's now four months since I was diagnosed autistic at 30 and recently I remembered that I had made a few video entries for myself at the time at which I was going through the diagnosis process. I felt strongly that it is important to share these videos because looking back on them, they shed light on the really challenging time that it is to be diagnosed with autism later on in life. I shared part one, which was the day after my initial assessment for autism a couple of videos ago, and I can link that here now. If you haven't watched it already, you can start there. And the video that you are about to watch now is part two. This was filmed four days after my initial assessment. It's a struggle to look back and see myself in that place. And it's a struggle to know that I'm still struggling with unmasking and understanding who I am and autistic burnout. But it's also comforting to know that in some small way in sharing my story, it might help someone else. Without further ado, this is part two. I hope that it helps you in some way and I'm sending my love and support to you at this challenging time. Okay, and cut. <laughs> it's me again. So it's been how many days since my initial assessment? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm on day four. The main thing that I have noticed since the assessment is how quickly I have slipped into what I assume is autistic burnout. It's like my body hearing the words, you are, you are most likely autistic, just let everything go. All of the masks and the pressure that I had subconsciously been putting on to be able to function in the neurotypical world suddenly just crashed. And I feel as though my brain has just crashed. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm nervous, but it's been really terrifying. Um, God, I'm sorry I'm emotional. It just comes in waves, especially when I talk about it, but I think it's good to talk about it because otherwise it stews in my brain and I just feel scared. So I guess the ways in which I've been struggling with what I assume is autistic burnout are that all of the, the symptoms, the things that I find difficult in life have become exponentially more difficult in the last few days. I have been trying to prioritise rest as much as I possibly can, cancelling plans that aren't entirely necessary and basically staying in bed all day every day, sleeping 13 hours a day which is so unlike me, usually I get between six and seven hours sleep and it's like suddenly my brain has just crashed and I need 13 hours to reboot and then even when I'm awake I'm not really there, my brain is foggy, my executive function is declining really rapidly, it's all of a sudden I can't conceptualise time, I went on a dog walk yesterday and that was like the only thing I had to do all day was take the dog out twice for a walk and when I came back from the second walk I had a complete meltdown <laughs> because my body temperature was just through the roof even though it wasn't that hot so my sensory overload is really bad and then that night there were children playing outside in our street as they usually do and I got so overwhelmed by the noise and these are all things I've always str always struggled with I've always struggled with keeping plans and organizing my time and sensory overwhelm but I'd never realized of course that it's it's actually a thing for me I'd always thought it was just kind of normal that people struggled with these things and now I'm realizing it's not and my coping mechanisms are down because of the burnout. It can be, it is very overwhelming. <sighs> so I've been trying as much as possible just to rest and be in the present moment and not think too much about what this means for me. It's become apparent that I do just need to let my body recoup and that that could take a little bit of time. I'm trying to think what other things I've been struggling with. My husband will probably be able, to be able to tell you. Oh, well, of course, so this has been the case for a few weeks now and it was one of the early indicators for me. I've completely lost the ability to look after myself, doing my washing, doing my laundry, cleaning up after myself. I know that I need to do it, but I just get overwhelmed by it and I, I can't. And I know that will sound really unusual and kind of unbelievable to people. And I, I myself, I'm still calling myself lazy and all those things, but I know that it's deeper than that now. I know that it is something that neurologically I struggle with and that's really hit rock bottom for me over the last few days. I had a shower and washed my hair just now, which is the biggest thing I've done aside from that walk in four days. 
And I think for me, the overwhelming thing is just the speed with which this has happened. I'd been off work for a few weeks, so I had been resting, but I'd been going out for coffees and I'd been seeing people and I'd been trying to do things that helped me to stay afloat mentally and feel like I'm contributing. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I had that meeting, all of that stuff went. And now, aside from doing one social thing that I really wanted to do for my friend, I'm not, I don't want to see people. I don't really want to go outside and do things don't really want to go for coffee. I just feel like lying in bed and staring at a wall and that's about all I think I'm capable of right now without going into meltdown and that's really overwhelming to go from someone who's got their life seemingly all together and the next minute to have it just sort of crumbling around you. I'm trying with positive mindset and mindfulness and even accepting that this is my reality right now and that this will pass and I'm sure I will get better. I feel positive that this is the right thing to know that I have this and I'll be able to manage it in the future. Regardless of all that, it's still just really hard. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, like other things that I've been doing recently that I've been really enjoying, like social media and stuff, I've just had to let go because I don't have the energy for it. And even my special interests is what the autistic community call the things that they are particularly interested in and sort of fixated by, like my art and my writing. I just, I'm not even interested in those. I think I've just got to write it out. Tomorrow I have a conversation with work where I have to log on to see whether or not they've accepted my resignation immediately. I, I don't have to go back into the office. I cannot go back in, <laughs> in this state. Like I can't even look after myself just outside of work so the idea of going into work is just not really an option right now uh, so we'll see what they say and take it from there. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow in which I'm going back to talk to her about the anxiety medication I'm on which was the thing that I was originally diagnosed with when I went into the doctor was anxiety and the anxiety has led to realising that I'm autistic. That's a generalisation it's been a very very long process but Ultimately, that's how this has worked. So I'm on propelanol, I think that's how you say it. And it's helping with the anxiety. And I think in turn, that's helping me address the autistic autism stuff, because I think if I was dealing with heightened physical symptoms of anxiety right now as well, it would be even more difficult. So yeah, I'm going back to the doctor tomorrow to talk to her about that and to see if I need to get more medication and to assess time off work and I will probably also inform her about my <laughs> initial assessment, assessment that I had privately um, and we'll go from there. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.